Okay, so today's lesson is on statistical questions. Um, we are starting out with the unit of statistics this week and talking about collecting data, what is a statistical question. Um, we will be doing this this week, next week, and maybe even the week after. Um, these are going to start out as just notes. And today's date is the 22nd. And the notes kind of jumped past one little section, which is starting out with what is a statistical question. Now I'm going to start out by just showing the vocab that most of you wrote down earlier. And the, the word was statistical question. It is a question that anticipates and accounts for a variety of answers. And a little earlier, we talked about it. We talked about how if I ask you a question like, um, or I look at your feet even, and I say, do you have on a tennis shoe or a flip-flop? And I look at one kid, and they tell me they have on a tennis shoe. That is not a statistical question, because it is just one answer, one kid, and I call it kind of boring, okay? Statistical questions are going to account or lead to a variety of answers. Now, when looking at statistical questions, there are two different ways that you can kind of collect the data. One would be like if I said flip-flops or sneakers, and if I change it to asking every kid in my class, do you like flip-flops or sneakers? And one kid says flip-flops, and one kid says flip-flops, and one kid says sneakers, and sneakers, and sneakers, and so on, and so on. Well, eventually you're creating, you are collecting data. You are, you have created a statistical question because it is leading to more than one answer, okay? This would be easy to just, what I call, make tally marks because it's just two different answers. Well, what it is is you've got questions like these that are easy, but then you've got questions like that are on these notes. Okay. These are questions based on intervals. Intervals meaning a set of numbers. Okay. It says sometimes a set of data collected to answer a statistical question can be organized into intervals to more easily organize the data. That's the key here. We want to organize it and make it what I call understandable. Okay. Yes. Intervals are, that's what I was getting ready to tell you. Um, intervals are when I call it, they give you a chunk of numbers. So let me kind of show you. The last thing it said, this often happens when a set of data has a wide range of values. Okay. So a lot of numbers involved. So like this one says, suppose you want to determine the number of different ringtones each of your math classmates has stored in his or her cell phone. So once you think about it, we've most of us have got a cell phone. Personally, I'm kind of boring with my cell phone. Every ring, every every time I get a phone call, it has the same ringtone because I've never gone through and set different people for different ringtones. Okay. What you can do is you can set each caller for a different ring to come through. So one might sound like an alarm clock and one sounds, it could, you could even buy them from Apple or whatever and they'd be your favorite song, okay? So when they're talking intervals, good question, this is what they're talking about. One person like me might do less than five ringtones because I call it, I'm kind of boring. And I do less than five ring tones. All my phone calls coming in have the same tone. Maybe I am a little weird and I just go program one for my husband. So I know when he calls, it has a different sound coming through. Okay? Well, that would still be in this interval because this is less than five. So anybody who has, I guess you'd say, one through five would be in that box. Okay? Now, granted, if I did my husband and my four kids, there's four kids. Let's take off the youngest. He doesn't have a cell phone. So I have, four kid, I have three kids and a husband. 
still be there. Still be there, right? Because it's less than, it's four, it's less than the five, okay? Now, some of y'all, because you have time on your hands, go in and you might program a different ringtone for a lot of your friends. So some of you might do five through nine. Now, this is an interval because it's covering people who do five ringtones, six, seven, eight, or nine. Interval means a variation of numbers, okay? This one, 10 to 14. And then the last one, 15 or more. Some of y'all go in and label every contact in your phone with a different ringtone. And you can do that. Usually your, your phone will have maybe 20 ringtones to choose from, but you can buy them. Like you can buy them from Apple or whoever and download them into your phone. Um, now, so listen, there's a couple things they're going to ask you. The first one is, you would write a statistical question. So it says, suppose you want to determine the number of different ringtones each of your math classmates has stored in his or her cell phone. So I want you to almost like pretend today. You're walking around the class. You ask, how many do you have stored? How many do you have stored? This is your statistical question. And I want you to notice something. A lot of statistical questions start out with the good old words of how many because that leads to number answers okay so there's your statistical question you would then survey your classmates now I'm gonna kinda cheat today I don't mind saying this and we're just gonna fill in some numbers okay we're gonna pretend that two of us are lazy and only have less than five ringtones Five to nine might be, let's say, eight. I don't know, 10 to 14, seven. And six of you got really crazy and you did 15 or more, okay? Um, I just couldn't, there's no way I could do that many ringtones, like 15 or more ringtones, because they would just, like, I wouldn't know who belonged to what. Yeah, it wouldn't, the, the ring wouldn't even matter to me. So, the last thing is, once you surveyed them, you would record them in a table similar to the one on the right. You can do different tables. That part's up to you. You just want to show organization. Is everybody good so far? Okay. Now, going down to the next part. Now, we're going to kind of analyze this information. So, how many different responses for the number of ringtones were there from the results of the survey? How many different responses are there? Total right here. Uh, total? 23. 23. So listen, a lot of times they're going to ask you, how many different responses are there? That means how many people did they poll or how many people did they question? So they, they polled 23 responses. They love that question. How many did they, you know, how many people did they question? Now, what is the advantage to organizing the data into intervals when recording this number of responses? What is the advantage? Listen, what is the advantage? Think about it. What if one of these people had, you know, 25 and another person had 37 and another person had 82 ringtones? Imagine trying to make a list, one, two, three, four, all the way to 87. Would that really be easy to read? It'd be, or it'd be like an organizational like nightmare, wouldn't it? So when you have this many responses, look what an interval does. It says it right there. It makes it easier to organize the data, easier to read, easier to organize. Intervals just make it easier to understand. Now, they're going to ask this question a ton. Like, for the, the whole week, this is on the quiz Friday. Explain why the question, how many different ringtones are shared in your cell phone, or stored, I'm sorry, stored in your cell phone? Is it a statistical question? Yes. 
But why? Why is it statistical? Think about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Either way, what, what makes it statistical? It's asking a whole bunch of people. Yes. Yes. Asks many people. How many answers does it lead to? Many. Yeah. Leads to multiple answers. That's the key here. You want it to lead to a bunch of answers. Kind of, yeah. Honestly. So you want it to be more complicated? Usually, yeah. And then write a statistical question for which the response could be organized into intervals. Listen, they're going to ask you to do this. Can you write a statistical question? And they're going to ask you, like, Certain questions, are they statistical or not? So, I'm going to give you a hint here. If you can remember the words, how many? It will help you form really good statistical questions. So, how many what? What kind of question could we ask? How many what? Pets, pets do you have? There you go. How many pets do you have? is a good statistical question. Um, even a question like how many cars are you in your driveway? Most of us one or two, but some of us might have four or five. I could say, I mean, you could do anything. Um, I don't know, how many times do you practice sports during a week? You know, how many jackets do you own? I know it sounds crazy, but anything leading to multiple answers is a statistical question. Okay, so the last part here. State whether each question is a statistical question and explain your reasoning. So number eight says, who is the first president of the United States? Is that statistical or non-statistical? Non-statistical. Nine, yes. Because there's only one answer. So, it's non-statistical because only one answer. George Washington is the only answer to that question. Yes, now I'll admit, I've had some weird answers today. That's kind of why I said George Washington. Okay. How much time do the students in my school spend on the Internet each night? Statistical, because someone might not spend any time. Some of us might only spend minutes, and some of us might spend hours. The reason is because it has many different answers or many different numbers. Okay, the next one, number 10. What is the height of the tallest water slide at Wild Rides Water Park? Nine, yes. Because there's only one answer. We may have to look it up on the internet. Um, I'm still trying to spell it, sorry. Okay, it is not statistical because there's only one answer. It's only going to be one height, like one feet or whatever. And then the admission, what are the admission prices to each of the state parks in Kentucky? Okay, I'm going to still, this one's still questionable to me. I'm going to say statistical because they charge different rates for different ages. Then usually different state parks charge for different things, meaning a state park who has hiking, fishing, swimming, the little beach access like our state park is a few more dollars usually than a state park that only has hiking. So usually the prices vary a little bit, okay? Now, the last part says write a statistical question. Um, write two questions of interest to you. The first one should be statistical. The second one um, should not be statistical. So let's say what is what would be a good statistical question? How many what? How many shoes do you own? Okay. And you can do whatever on yours. That's fine. 
definitely statistical. What would be not statistical? Okay. What is the... And I'm a fluffiest. I don't know how to spell that. Fluffiest. Close enough. Fluffiest dog in the world. And maybe you would need to kind of look that up. You know, on the Internet, the key is on this section, because I'm going to pass out this last thing. The key is on this section. You've got to be able to write statistical and non-statistical questions and also be able to tell me if it is statistical or not statistical. Okay? Um, now, this is the classwork homework. And I am trying to go over a drop of it, especially on the back, because it gets kind of detailed. Okay? When they are looking at data now, they are not only wanting just if it is statistical, they are wanting if it is an inches or feet, if it is, I'm trying to think what else is it, inches, feet, no, oh, what would you measure like inches and feet at? No, like what kind of device would, would measure? Okay, so I know. My question wasn't great, I won't lie. But what they're getting at is that they're also going to be asking you those questions. So if you would flip it over to the back, because I want to go through this. Now, if I was you, I would watch while I do this section. There is a we this is kind of different than what we just talked about. I like it though, it's just different. It says, describe the data set by listing the attribute measured, the unit of measure, the likely means of measurement, and the number of observations. Now, basically they have done an example with you right here that will help you. If you will look right now, here we go. This one says daily temperature. And if you'll notice, they've made a graph or a chart of all the daily temperatures. It says degrees Fahrenheit, and there's a bunch of numbers. I'm going to assume these are the highs, okay? Now, looking at it, there are four different things that they listed here. This is where I need your eyes. So the first thing they did was the attribute. The attribute was that they were measuring their daily temperatures. That's the attribute. Their unit of measure. How did they measure it? They measured it with degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the second thing you have to describe. Okay, the third thing. What is their means of measurement? How did they measure it? With what devices, I'll call it? Well, they measure with a thermometer. And then the last thing they want you to fill in is the number of observations. So how many people or numbers were polled? For this, it's temperatures. Okay? They want you to go through and do all four of those with each one of these. It's not hard if you kind of look back at the one before. So I'm going to do one with you. Here we go. Plant heights. It says, this one says, plant heights. The height of plants in inches. And it's got ten different numbers right here. They must have measured some plants and how tall they were. Okay. So the first thing they want is the attribute. Okay. What were they measuring? The attribute is? Plants. Height of plants. Height of plants. Listen, this is on Friday's quiz. This, like, we got to know what they're asking each one. Okay. The second one they ask is the unit of measure. So how did they measure those plants? In inches. 
It's all given to you, but you you got to give me the right answers. Like, it's all in the chart. Okay. What would be the means of measurement? Inches. Well, no, sorry. It is inches, but the means of measurement... How do you measure inches? Rulers. There you go. Or a measuring tape. And I would take both those answers. I would. Okay. And then the number of observations. Is 10. Yes. They love that question. Because... You know, they're wanting to see, can you tell how many people were um, asked that question or whatever. Now, so you've got the four different things for each one of these. Please look at the bottom of this page with me before you pack up. Look, they're asking you specific questions. Means of measurement, that was from up top. Unit of measure, that was from up top. Please sit down. And then the back part is all about statistical and non-statistical questions. Please finish this for homework. Front and back. Thank you. Back.